So you're given an extended example of uh, journal entries for nonprofits beginning on page 650 and going through almost the end of the chapter 657. Uh, it actually can it actually goes through the financial statements as well. Okay. Exercise 16-3 is on page 668. It says record the following transactions in the accounts of a non-government VHWO or ONPO. Number one, unconditional pledges made to the organization during the year total $1 million unrestricted, $500,000 restricted to a specific program. It doesn't tell you what specific program, it just says a specific program. All of the restricted pledges are collected during the year and 75% of the unrestricted pledges are collected. 20% of the uncollected pledges outstanding at year, at year end are expected to be uncollectable. Okay, so you could break this up into multiple entries, or you can aggregate it into one entry. Okay, so I've, I've aggregated it here. You could split it up in a, in, a, in another way if you if you so chose. Okay. So the pledge, uh, the unconditional pledge was for 1.5 million. Okay. So of that, I got most of it in cash. Most of it in cash. There was $250,000 I didn't get in cash. It, it remained uncollected, right? Because only 75%. Um, all restricted pledges were collected, but only 75% of the unrestricted pledges were collected. Okay? Then I have an allowance for uncollectible pledges that came out to be $50,000. I have unrestricted support contributions for $750,000. Temporarily restricted support contributions for seven hundred thousand. Okay. Can we walk through how you got those numbers? Can we walk through how I got those numbers? Yes, I believe we can. Okay. If I can remember. Okay, so for your cash, that's the whole five hundred thousand plus seventy-five percent of the million. Mm hmm. So then, twenty-five percent of the million will be your pledges receivable. Well, that's what you're still expecting to receive. Expecting and of that. Part. 20% is uncollectible, so that's where your 50,000 comes in. Correct. Okay? So that's the uncollectible. Now, as far as the unrestricted support and the temporarily restricted support, the reason it's broken up that way is in your chapter, when it talks about pledges receivable, back on wherever that was, um, page 646, it says that a, in italics, a time restriction for use in subsequent periods is implied for uncollected pledges unless explicitly contradicted by the donor. Okay? So anything that's, anything that's pledged, even if it's pledged as unrestricted funds, until it's collected, right, those pieces become temporarily restricted. Does that make sense? So, because it's a pledge, right, there's a time restriction on it, right? The time restriction is, until I collect the pledge, I don't actually have the money, okay? So, until that pledge is collected, that time restriction stays, okay? But you can't use money you don't have. That's right. You, you're, you're exactly right. That's why we, our practice at Warner, and you can elect this, Right? It, it tells you in the chapter that you can choose to book pledges as revenue or book pledges not, or not book them as revenue. We don't book them as revenue because we don't consider them revenue until they get to us. I mean, we just don't because we don't know that they're going to come in. Right? The only one that I know of um, that we booked, that was a pledge that we booked as revenue, was um, a person won the lottery. And they gave us a certain amount every year, okay? And it was like an automatic deduction from their checking account. So we considered that. We knew it was a pledge ongoing, but they had already paid some of it. So we, we booked it as revenue, being fairly certain that it would come in. Okay? That's, so that's the only time we've done that. Okay? Any other questions on 
this one. This first piece. Okay. This seven hundred thousand, Jackie. The seven. The reason this isn't seven fifty is because fifty of it is up here. Right. Seven hundred fifty was unrestricted, and then the other two hundred. So of this two fifty, right? This is all. This is pledged as unrestricted money. But because it hasn't been collected, 200 of it goes there and the other 50 is there. If that helps. I don't know. Okay? Number two. Cash gifts of 300,000 are collected during the year. These gifts are restricted for permanent endowment purposes. So, I'm going to record um, the cash coming in. And I'm going to uh, credit my permanently restricted support contributions, my revenue. Okay? To permanently to permanent restriction. Number three, qualifying costs of two hundred twenty thousand are incurred for the program for which restricted pledges were received. So we had received some of the restricted pledges, right? So um, I book those expenses two hundred twenty two thousand, and I use cash to pay for them. Okay, this entry is a recurring entry that, I mean, you'll see it recurring in the example in chapter 16. And in, in real practice, um, your account numbers would probably reflect what fund you're moving from, right? So this is a reclassification out of uh, the temporarily restricted fund. Do we have to put that in there? What? The reclassification out stuff. You can call it something different, but okay. the entry needs to be there. Because this, this, is, this is your release of restriction, right? So you're releasing the money. So if you look on the bottom of page 650, right at the beginning of the example, okay? Right at the beginning of the example, it shows you this reclassifications out, reclassifications in. To record reclassification of temporarily restricted net assets is unrestricted net assets, Okay? So what we're doing is we're taking money that had been given for a certain purpose and there, therefore put in the restricted fund, the temporarily restricted fund. We're moving it out of the temporarily restricted fund and putting it in the unrestricted fund, fund to offset those expenses that we paid. Does that make sense? Because yeah. all expenses go come out of the unrestricted fund. So you, in essence, have a hole then in the unrestricted fund, but you have money in the restricted fund. Okay, so what happens is it moves, it has to move from the temporarily restricted fund to the unrestricted fund to cover, to offset those expenses. Okay. That's what you're recording there. Okay. okay. And then number four, conditional pledges made to the organization during the year, total 90,000 unrestricted, none were collected during the year. Because they were conditional pledges, there is no entry. Okay, because they were conditional.